And it used to be that the person was here, and now that person's like here, and then they're here, and then they're... You know how you get their head down? Well, first of all, if I could get them to look lower, that, and that would be excellent, if I could have my horse focus lower. Now, if I could have him lengthen his hind legs and step up, so <laughs> instead of reaching up in the air and lifting, if I could have my horse lengthen stride, he would lengthen his back, he would use his hind legs, engage, get impulsive, he would drive, he would come up over his back and it would come through to his legs. It would come through to his back and it would come through to his head and neck. So it would be the idea of lengthen your stride and step, reach further, reach further, reach further, reach further, reach further. And you make sure you're following, reach further, reach further and following. And you pretend your reins are like two rigid sticks and as you start, I pretend I'm pushing his head <laughs> down, even when he's excited. So I work the length of stride, and then I think about my rigid reins, pushing the head lower, lower, lower. And I can get real low when he's not so up, but so you get that. So lengthening the whole horse. If you, if, I'll tell you what, where they put their legs, that shapes their body. So think about a horse striding long versus a horse striding really short and how that, where they put their hooves and their legs affects how they position their body. So it's more about the, the angle of your pelvis and then your tuning fork thighs. Now, if I need backup, I could use my lower leg, but primarily the aid should come from your seat and your, the angle of your pelvis, uh, or maybe I shouldn't say pelvis, but your sit bones and your, your hips. So like here, you can see he's coming into this space. If you think of a triangle, the two sit bones are seat bones, and uh, um, the, the front, the pubis is the, is the bone in the front. It makes a triangle. And so if you think about that, when I go right lead, Think about where my triangle is positioned. And when I go left lead, so now my triangle is slightly this way. So right lead is coming in its heart. There we go. It's more this way. So you can do it without that exaggerated leg. The question was she heard it should be a straight line ear, shoulder, hip, heel. It depends. In dressage, have you noticed riders... If I exaggerate this once, you ever notice they have a little bit of a bobbly head? So, like doing an extension, I'm not going to do a full extension, I'm just going to, but you'll notice a looseness. And have you ever noticed there's a joke about the dressage bobblehead, right? Why is that? It's because they're actually able to sit up and buffer or absorb the up motion of the horse. So, it's important to keep a relaxed back. So if you can keep a relaxed back with your ears above your shoulders, you could get away with it. But a lot of times, if you just relax your head a little, it allows me to come up in my body. And so sometimes the ears are forward of the shoulders. But you'll see like vaqueros ride real straight and tall. You know what I mean? Um, so that is interesting. So I tell people that drop their chin and look down, I'll tell those people, or if someone's, slout, uh, if someone's head is forward a lot when they ride, I will tell them straight line, ear, shoulder, hip, heel. But if somebody's rigid, like some people go, I want to sit tall, this would not work. He could not trot with my muscle tone this rigid. So I need to relax a little. <laughs> So your ears might come forward. So make sense? It's okay if the ears are slightly forward of that line. Yeah. Oh, the heels. Oh, that's a good one. If your heels are down here, my legs are away from my, the horse's side. I can't talk to him very quietly anymore. His hind end can waller. His hind end can get wiggly because I can't 
do anything. My natural shock absorbers, my ankle, my knee, and my hip are natural shock absorbers, but when I do that, it's jarring and rigid. And you're going to sit heavy on their back, and they're going to hollow their back out when your heels are down too far. If your heel is down too far, you're not able to buffer the upward movement of the horse to go with that up, up movement. Here's another thing. If I force the heel down really far and then I try to get a straight line, shoulder, hip, heel, with my heel down, I'm tight. I'm real tight. I can't, I'm not flexible enough. I should be. What I do is I relax my heel and I have just, a, I work on toe tapping in my stirrup. So my heel, you know, it's, it's not essential that you're cranking your heel down, but I work on just that I could tap the stirrup with my toe and I keep a light weight in the stirrups, just a light weight. And I relax my heel so it's in what I call neutral position, middle, middle position. The knee should be in middle position and the hip should be in the middle position because if you're in neutral position, you can go any direction from there. But if I'm maxed out, I'm stuck, I'm jammed, I can't, it's rigid. So don't force your heel down too far. We teach beginners that because the fetal position thing we're born with, when somebody, a, 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 be, a new person gets on a horse and they're not, their body's not used to it. So they sit on a horse and they're like this, you know? And I'll be like, okay, that horse is going to get all bunched up because you're bunched up. So we talk about that, heel down. And then over time, your muscles stretch, your flexibility increases. And it used to be that the person was here and now that person's like here and then they're here and then they're yeah. You know what I'm talking, you laugh because you can visualize that. That's a good question, thank you. Yes? Oh, that's a good one too. So being centered is great. Ride the up, ride the lift. Let's talk about that. Do you post at the trot? Oh, but first thing you should do. So we talked about trotting and preparing to position and, and getting his life up. So when I trot, I'm rising and sitting. One up, one down, one up, one down, one up, one down, one up, one down, all right? So I'm rising, and you can clearly see that I'm up, and I'm not sitting real heavy on his back. You can see that. The sitting trot's the same. It's just not as exact, it's not as obvious. So instead of me going like this, my head, though, still goes up, 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 up. It lifts up, 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 up. Everybody wants to keep their rump in the saddle, so they think down, 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 and they push their, they think they've got to sit down, but you actually buffer. That means that you get in time and you come up, 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 you lift up, but you don't get carried away. You're still sitting with your sit bones, seat bones in the saddle, but you're not sitting heavy on them anymore. And like I used to tell people, have a Velcro seat, but then, then that makes them kind of go like, okay, Velcro seat, and they go. <laughs> so you buffer, you go with, you, you absorb the up. The, the secret to being, having a nice trot is you're centered up in position and balance, and you absorb the lift. If you can absorb the lift, your horse can gait better, your horse can canter better, you can elevate, get suspension, all that great stuff. So posting, oh yeah, posting, and then what I'll do is I'll post lower to the saddle. So I might post here and then I post a little lower until I'm not posting and I'm basically, so I'll post up and then I'll post lower, 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 and now I'm just up, 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 up. And then if I get, anytime you, you're trotting and you start bouncing, post again. So what I do is I have riders work on that. They'll say, Jack, when I ride, I'm bouncy. And I say, okay, post the trot. And then I'll tell them this, I'll say, sit two. So they post the trot and then I go, one, two, up, 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 one, two, up, 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 one, two, up. You got that? Then I go threes, ready? So my, my riders, I teach this to when they're bouncing. I say, okay, sit threes, ready? So I go one, two, three, up, 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 one, two, three, up, up, up. And I could go four or five. So if I, if I, you control it. Don't sit on the horse's back 
until we lose ourselves, lose our balance, get out of control. Because then you're tensing, holding on, grabbing, your horse gets freaked out, they tense. So quit while you're ahead, just go back to posting. So you're rising and just work on controlling it. I'll sit down two and rise again. Sit down th three or four and rise again. But don't wait for yourself to bounce. Stay in control of your body.